Hey, get out of here! This is my house! Oh my god, Brian, what happened? Who did this to you? Did you do this? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the Peter Griffin scenes that make us laugh the most. <laughs> Number 20, Shapoopy. Peter's had a lot of jobs over the years, including playing professional football. In one season four episode, he joins the New England Patriots alongside quarterback Tom Brady. We're really excited to have Peter. I think he's gonna make a great addition to a great team. I wanna thank God, uh, I wanna thank the Lord God, uh, cause it's not really up to me, it's up to him. However, Brady, who plays himself, continually chides Peter for showing off after scoring goals. This reaches its peak as Peter launches into a seemingly impromptu performance of Shapoopy, a song from the musical The Music Man. Shapoopy, 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 the girl who's hard to get. Shapoopy, 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 but you can win her yet. The audience, players, and everyone watching at home all join in as Peter belts out this classic number, complete with choreographed dances. It's the kind of grandiose silliness that makes Peter such a fun character. And all over a single touchdown. All right, I made a touchdown. Number 19, Fashion Faux Pas. Y2K, I heard it from a chicken man. With the advent of the new millennium, people were concerned. The whole Y2K thing was a very real concern at the time, even if it didn't end up panning out. Haven't you heard? At midnight, every computer in the world is gonna fail. Planes will fall out of the sky, and all the world's nuclear weapons will explode, annihilating the entire planet. Even so, Peter starts panicking on New Year's Eve. While Lois and the rest of the family get ready for a New Year's party, Peter is nowhere to be found. This leads Lois to recall how often he takes to prepare for parties. In a cutaway, we see that Peter and Lois both wear the same dress to attend her cousin's wedding. Peter, we're gonna be late for my cousin's wedding. Aren't you dressed yet? Oh, crap. Well, one of us is gonna have to change. To be honest, we think he wore it better. Number 18, The Dance of Life. This next one is for all the ladies out there. It should surprise no one that Peter is the jealous type. After Lois reconnects with an old boyfriend, Peter decides to do the most Peter Griffin thing imaginable and hires a lady of the evening to make his wife jealous. Peter Gifford? <gasps> my God, Dora, my old girlfriend. What a surprise that you would want to look me up. You always thought I was so handsome. After dragging Peter into a little scene room of the house, Lois confronts him about his envy. Peter, after rambling about Congress and the Fifth Commandment, urges Lois to love as much as he does, doing an absurd dance to emphasize his point. Dance with me, Lois. Dance the dance of life. Yeah, maybe you should call that marriage counselor. However, the end result of that dance is that he starts to see things her way. The scene is a great distillation of Peter's theatricality and stupidity. Number 17, Serial Message. Clear. Clear. Oh, you, you saved my life, Doctor. Clear. Speaking of Peter's stupidity, this is an excellent example of it. While on a trip, Lois loses their car at a casino. To win it back from the casino's Native American owners, Peter is charged with going on a vision quest. A vision quest is a sacred spiritual journey. Your husband must go out in the wilderness without food or water. Or shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or shoes. He must remain there until he can communicate with nature. Peter claims to Lois that it will be easy, as he's had visions before. Whipping out a cutaway, we see him receive an eerie message in his cereal. Oh my god, Brian, there's a message in my alphabet. It says, ooh. Peter, those are Cheerios. It's a short scene, but it's a great example of Peter's idiocy. We've had greater success interpreting our lucky charms. Number 16, Butt Scratcher. Cool, I don't have to go to school. I can just pee in my bed all day. Chris may be as dopey as his dad, but thanks to Lois's father, he is able to attend a private academy. Unfortunately, the high tuition fees mean that Peter is forced to take up his old job, purveying tools to reach itches in hard to hit places at baseball games. Butt scratcher! Butt scratcher! Can't you butt scratcher here? Butt scratcher! Butt scratcher! Butt scratcher! Butt scratcher! Butt scratcher! Butt scratcher! His repeated calls of butt scratcher will never get old. 
He even brings his work home with him. But Lois is less than appreciative. I've been selling butt scratches. Butt scratcher? No, Peter. Butt scratcher! Peter, no! Butt scratcher! No! Butt scratcher. He'd make a killing if he sold to Family Guy fans. But sadly, that is an itch we cannot scratch. Number 15, narration. Speaking of Chris, when Peter's oldest son starts speaking differently than usual in the car, he becomes convinced he's possessed. Meg, start at Psalm 41 and don't stop reading till I tell you. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. After the rest of the family explains, Peter calms down. Brian recalls that Peter is prone to going through phases of odd behavior himself, citing when he narrated his own life. Peter speaks aloud his inner thoughts while Lois serves dinner, criticizing her cooking and using more complex words than he usually does. I walked into the kitchen and sat down at the table. I looked with a grimace at the questionable meal Lois had placed in front of me. Of course, I'd never tell her how disgusted I was with her cooking, but somehow I think she knew. It still earns him a punch in the face from his wife, though. And even being knocked out for a while isn't enough to get him to stop. I awoke several hours later in a daze. I concluded the 15th entry with my own narration, but is it truly mine or merely what is written for me? Number 14, Audition. While at the Drunken Clam, Peter drinks with news anchor Tom Tucker, who has recently been replaced with a younger newscaster. Since he arrived, our ratings have skyrocketed. They're grooming Dallas, which means I'm on my way out. What? We can't let that happen. If that guy becomes the anchor every night, he's gonna be- <laughs> Sorry, I still get a little dizzy from the train. Peter resolves to help improve Tom's image. He claims he can do anything he sets his mind to, citing the time he was on the singing competition show, The Voice. I'm doing this for my mother, who taught me to sing when I was only seven. She was my biggest inspiration, and she was taken from me when I was 12 in a fatal car accident. A cutaway shows Peter tearfully relating a made-up sob story lampooning how many talent show contestants advance based on drawing sympathy from the judges instead of their merits. And Peter's song of choice just seals the deal. So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Viva Forever might have been a better choice given his vibe, but this is funnier at least. Number 13, Peter's Nails. Why are you making such a big deal out of this, Lois? I was just a little tired. Yeah, well, that's how it begins, Brian. Then the next thing you know, I'm making Peter dig a hole in the yard and you're in a pillowcase. Brian's a dog and dogs can't live forever, except on TV. When the family starts to realize Brian's limitations after a scare, Peter decides he'll have to get used to the idea, just as he got used to his acrylic nails. We then see Peter apparently acting as a secretary at a law office, sporting long false nails. Scanyan wine stock and race man. Hey, LaRonda. Peter's deliberately paced typing and complete lack of concern for all the people he has on hold help make this a hilarious stereotype of the unconcerned personal assistant. The nails totally work on him, too. No, I got four people on hold, but I can't talk. Number 12, if at first you don't succeed. Family feuds come in a quahog? Peter, we should try out. A family can win $5,000 on that show. The Griffin family wins a spot on Family Feud. Throughout the game, each of the Griffins delivers answers that are funny and often revealing about their personalities. Peter, three answers on the board that can beat that. Name something you find in your bathroom. Finding your bathroom, finding your bathroom. Richard, I'm gonna go with fetus in the toilet bowl. However, it comes down to Peter in the bonus round. Charged with coming up with an example of something you sit in, Peter says chair. Unfortunately, Lois already answered this during her turn. However, that doesn't stop Peter, who continues to say variations on the word with no success. Hi, chair. That's still a chair. Chair. Say something other than chair. What if I can't think of anything? You can pass. How do I pass? Just say it. Say what? Say pass. Chair. He may lose the Griffins the game and his memory, but this hysterical moment is a winner in our book. Number 11, Peter poops his pants. Who's texting me? <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Stop it, you guys! You're ruining all my clothes! As funny as Peter is, in this case, his reaction to something funny is arguably even funnier than what he's reacting to. After Chris hears a dirty joke from Quagmire, Peter wants to hear the joke himself. However, he soon regrets this decision as he finds the joke so funny he soils his pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, God, I crap my pants. <laughs> it's funny when it happens to other people. Quagmire and Joe, after learning this, decide to repeatedly tell the joke to Peter and laugh at his misfortune, using increasingly outlandish ways to deliver it. Peter manages to get his revenge, though. Hey, those are my pants. That's right. Thought I'd come by and see if you have any jokes to tell. I enjoy a joke. I don't know. I want to tell the joke, but I like those pants. I'll tell the joke. Go ahead, Joe. I'm all in it. We'd say it's too bad we can't hear the rest of the joke for ourselves, but at least we won't spend as much on new pants. Number 10. Can't touch me. Hey, that's against the law. You're coming with me. Uh, uh, uh. Can't touch me. Can't touch me. When Peter establishes his own micronation called Pretoria, after learning his house is not technically part of the United States, he also gets diplomatic immunity, a power he naturally chooses to abuse. Just like the bad guy from Lethal Weapon 2, I've got diplomatic immunity, so hey mate, you can't sue. During a night on the town, Peter launches into an impromptu musical number based on MC Hammer's You Can't Touch This, during which he flaunts all the things he's able to do without consequences. I'm Presidential Peter. Interns think I'm hot. Don't care if you're handicapped, I'll still park in your spot. The song is an excellent microcosm of Family Guy itself, showcasing its irreverence, random humor, and pop culture references in a short and catchy span, while also showing off Peter's impressive dance moves. You can't touch me. What in God's name is he doing? You can't touch me. I believe that's the worm. Stop. Peter time. Number nine. Why are we not funding this? I'd like to offer you a lifetime supply of McBurger Town Burgers. Free burgers? After winning a lifetime supply of free food at McBurger Town for saving its manager from a fire, Peter proceeds to have a stroke after eating 30 burgers in a row. Half of his body becomes paralyzed, so Peter eventually goes to a stem cell research center to speed up his rehabilitation. The scene then jumps to five minutes later when he exits the building back to his old self. Peter then incredulously asks why stem cells are not being funded. Along with being an example of the show's social commentary, this moment has become a meme, demonstrating Peter's ability to help us give voice to our own opinions. How long was I in there? About five minutes. Why are we not funding this? Number eight, Peter forgets something important. Sweet hat. Ah! Oh, you're awake. Hey, uh, can you hand me the pretzels? When Peter hears that Mel Gibson has a rarely used suite at a fancy New York hotel, he decides to take Lois there and impersonate the famous actor to use the room. You're Mel Gibson? Yes, I've put on a few pounds for my next role. I play Peter Griffin, a heroic warrior who defied the English to free England from the English. The duo enjoys the extravagant luxuries they discover there. However, upon discovering Gibson's secret screening room and a trailer for an outlandish sequel to The Passion of the Christ, Peter decides that it should never see the light of day. Pursued by Gibson's men, Peter relates the intensity of their chase to the time he forgot how to perform a simple action. It's a short clip, but it hits harder than Peter hits that chair. Number 7. Electric Man Peter, you wore those pajamas to your office? Hey, at least I'm mixing it up a little bit. On one occasion, Peter purchases a pair of flannel full-body pajamas and begins wearing them everywhere, as he finds them extremely comfortable. However, upon being told he has to stop wearing them, he drags his feet on the ground in disappointment and inadvertently discovers the pajamas' ability to create static electricity. Ah! What the hell was that? Ah! Naturally, the spectacled man-child goes overboard fast, dubbing himself Electric Man and taking any opportunity to zap everyone in the house in increasingly elaborate ways. Dad! I am not your dad. I am Electric Man. Peter's childish joy and enthusiasm for shocking his family are infectious and had us giggling right along with him. <laughs> Ow! Damn it, Peter, stop it! Number six. Peter forces Meg to smell his gas. Dad, why are we just sitting here? Just give me a minute, Meg. Peter is a terrible father, particularly to his daughter Meg. One of the more heinously amusing things he does to her on a regular basis is forcing her to smell his farts. The arguably funniest of these flatulent father-daughter escapades happens when Peter tries teaching Meg how to attract a boyfriend. Oh my god, Dad, you farted! That is so nasty! Part of his training involves keeping her in a locked car with him while his <clears throat> odor fills it. This, Peter insists, will help Meg get used to loving a future boyfriend's own gas. The sexiest thing a woman could do for a man is learn to love his gas. 
Love the gash, Meg. Love it! The seriousness with which Peter treats something so ridiculous is hilarious, while Meg's discomfort is also very entertaining. This, this is why we're here. This is why we're here. Number five, P. Tear Griffin. Prejudice for your cupcake. Upset at not being able to go on vacation, Peter checks into a rehab clinic after Brian attends one to overcome addictions he acquires as a police dog. When one of the staff members becomes suspicious of Peter's behavior and asks him his name, the big-chinned doofus tries improvising a name from the things he sees in the room around him. As it goes, the things that catch his eye happen to be a P, a tear, and an actual griffin flying inside the clinic, showcasing Peter's stupidity, bad luck, and some of the show's most absurd humor. This is a great Peter moment. Uh, P, uh, uh, uh. Tear, uh, uh, Griffin. Yeah, yeah, Peter Griffin. Oh, crap. Number four, Peter's Bad Falls. Ah! What? What is it? I got a splinter! After Stewie gets a splinter, Lois replaces the stairs in the Griffin house. However, Peter finds their slicker surface difficult to deal with, to the point where he falls and hurts himself every time he tries to walk down from the second floor. His attempts to prevent falling and to shield himself from harm become more complex and equally as futile as the episode goes on, culminating in a refusal to go down them at all. Damn it, I hate these new stairs! Reminiscent of classic cartoon slapstick, Peter's tumbles are an equally classic moment from him, though you'd think he'd have learned his lesson after trying to turn them into a water slide. <laughs> Number three, hurting his knee. Chumba, wumba, go. Ah! Ah! Peter does have a penchant for injuries, but perhaps his most notorious one is when he injures his knee. In this episode, Peter runs home, ecstatic to have won a prize. However, outside the house, he trips and hurts his knee, cradling it while inhaling sharply and exhaling slowly. Ah! Ah! This goes on for nearly half a minute in one of the show's most drawn-out gags. Thereafter, Peter, as well as other characters, often call back to this moment whenever they injure their knees, making the same noises and posture. Number two, Ernie the Giant Chicken Fights. You son of a- After receiving an expired coupon from a giant talking chicken, Peter develops a rivalry with the bird that spans seasons. Following their initial bout, Peter and the chicken, whose name is Ernie, engage in intense and intricately crafted fight sequences on a semi-regular basis and spanning various colorful locales. <laughs> These fights interrupt whatever's going on in the episode at the time and last for several minutes before culminating in Peter's victory, though Ernie always lives to fight another day. While Peter's conflict with Homer Simpson was also quite well done, his fights with his avian rival will always be our favorite for their excitement and superb visual comedy. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the bird is the word. Oh my God, this is Surfin' Bird by the Trashman. This is my favorite song of all time. While eating at a diner with his family, Peter rediscovers his love for the song Surfin' Bird by the Trashman after the tune plays on the jukebox. Thereafter, Peter buys the record and proceeds to annoy his family with the song at every opportunity, setting them up verbally to make a joke using the lyrics and even singing the song in bed. Although that particular record is eventually destroyed, the song becomes Peter's unofficial anthem, which is fitting since it kind of fits him to a T. Both are annoying, goofy, and very memorable. Ba bird's the word, ba 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 bird, 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 ba bird's the word. Is there a Peter Griffin moment that makes you laugh so hard you poop your pants? Share it with us in the comments. The moment, not the feces. Let's go home. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.